Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm great this afternoon. How are you, Sam? Good. Um, we are talking to a NAMI former president, um, National Alliance of Mental Illness. Um, then she also worked for Social Security and her help host the meetings uh tuesday nights you want to know what i have done for, for nami yeah and what it means and what what do they do for the for the community and yeah this- sure so um i started nami kansas city a little over four years ago um i was talking to the director of nami missouri and there used to be one here in kansas city And she and I agreed that there was a good need for that um, in this area. So I created a board and I was the president of that board for about two and a half years. I am presently um, the vice president of that board. And I also teach classes and I'm a facilitator. I've been doing that for a very long time, almost 10 years here in Kansas City. And I facilitate a group to for individuals that are living with mental illness and are in recovery of their mental illness. I also give presentations and speeches and um, I have worn many hats and volunteered in lots of ways for NAMI Kansas City. Uh, Personally, I feel like I get as much out of it as I put into it. Um, It it gives me a source of strength and support and community and camaraderie, and um, it checks a lot of boxes for my personal goals. So I feel very honored, very blessed to be able to participate as a volunteer, as a board member, and as the vice president of NAMI Greater Kansas City. Thanks for asking. And you guys provide help with families, too, um, that have... Yep. NAMI Greater Kansas City provides free mental health services to individuals living with mental illness and their families. Uh, Presently, it's an 18 and up organization, but we are working to start incorporating some teen programs. And um, we have an upcoming program with the Girl Scouts as well. Um, So all the things that we do for the community are free of charge. And our organization is nonprofit. It is officially a nonprofit um, status, uh, non-taxable, and um, we earned that a st- status about two years ago. So that was a great accomplishment. And then in my personal life, I do social work. I work for the state of Missouri um, in the unemployment office. I've done that for about 20 years. So NAMI Connections is the every Tuesday at 7.15 to 8.30? The group that I... Yeah, so the group that I facilitate, which is called NAMI Connections, meets um, every Tuesday evening from 7.15 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. That is um, on Zoom. Um, the, the group hasn't met in person since prior to the pandemic. Um, I don't know when that will happen again in the future, if ever, quite honestly. But we have people that Zoom in to the meeting from all over the country Um, It's a real mixed bag, so to speak, of individuals that are living with mental illness that Zoom in every week, and um, they have a wide range of variety of um, diagnosis as well. Okay, um, why don't we talk about OCD, and then we'll get to anxiety disorder, and then whatever else you want to talk about. So in this little article, it says what OCD is. Obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD is a mental health disorder in which you have thoughts and rituals of compulsion over and over again. They interfere with your life, but you can't control or stop them. Anything else you'd like to add to that? I mean, I feel like you can learn to control them and you can learn to stop those behaviors. Um, It's not easy. And it, it takes a lot of coping skills and for me, a lot of therapy to learn how to get OCD under control. I was diagnosed with OCD myself about 12 years ago, um, probably had it my whole life, but was never really officially diagnosed until then. 
and my own OCD um, flares up the more stressed out I am in my personal life. So which one do you do the most? Which, which um, habit do you do? Behaviors. Yeah. Well, I have from, and, and this is just speaking to myself because everyone is, is unique. Um, I would say that I, I have moderate um, OCD and it's pretty controlled um, at the moment. So I'm a compulsive hand washer. Um, I often have a sensation that my hands are sticky, like they have honey all over them. That's a, that's a good description, but I know that they're not. And I have a compulsive, compulsive disorder where I just want to keep washing them until they don't feel that way, even though I know they're clean and they don't have anything sticky on them. So I've learned coping skills to stop myself from getting in that repetitive habit of doing that when I'm stressed out or when my mind thinks that my hands are sticky or dirty, but I know that they're not because I have recently washed them. I also have a lot of things in my life that have to be in a certain place all the time. And I have to know where they are all the time and they have to be in a particular order. For example, um, I have to have my wallet organized in a very specific way. All of my cards and credit cards have to be in a certain order facing a certain direction. And if they're not that way, I feel very, very, very anxious. Um, so as long as I keep them that way, it doesn't bother me. Um, I also have an obsession with um, knowing that I know where my car keys are all the time. And I know where my wallet and my phone are all the time and is pretty easy controlled um, because I just keep them in my purse all the time if they're not on me. And I have my keys latched to the outside of my purse where I can see them. Um, luckily I'm not, um, OCD about, um, turning door locks or, you know, checking to make sure that the oven is off or, um, that the lights are off, um, or, or things like that. Like my obsessive compulsion, um, mostly has to do with those things. Also, um, not really a medical term, but I, I have a bit of a germ, germophobia, as well. Um, like I am constantly thinking about um, germs and germs being in my space and germs getting me sick. Um, so it kind of grosses me out. And I know that it's not normal per se to think about germs in the way that I do. Um, it also directly correlates with the compulsive hand washing. Um, for example, like the first thing I do when I walk in the door um, before I do anything is I immediately go wash my hands. Um, I keep a roll of like Clorox wipes in my car and wipe down everything in my car almost every time I'm in my car. Um, I go through hand sanitizer pretty quickly. question that we get a lot is what is the best treatment for OCD? I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the best non-medication treatment and then we can talk a little bit about meds as well. But research is pretty clear that the best non-medication treatment for OCD is a therapy called exposure and response prevention or ERP. And I really think of it as two main components. The first is resisting rituals as they come up in people's everyday lives. So for example, if somebody has a worry about contamination or germs and their compulsion is to wash their hands a lot or clean things around them, the goal would be to start reducing those rituals and eventually get to a place where they're not engaging in any rituals ideally. It's not something that happens overnight, but that is the goal from day one to start resisting those as much as possible. And then the second component is intentionally confronting things that bring up that fear that people are obsessing about. So going back to that contamination example, 
not just not doing rituals, but now actually doing things that make the person feel contaminated and resisting their rituals in that moment.